Looking closely, you can see the water level inside the diver rise when you squeeze and descend again when you let go. In a Cartesian diver is the only time I've actually seen the air get smaller. Compression is like having a backpack and pushing stuff into it. Once it fills up, you just push in more stuff and squeeze what's already there. Let's take a behind the scenes look at a place where they use compressed air a lot. Hi, I'm Rich Best from Sunken Treasure Scuba Center. Been teaching diving here in Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania for 30 years. It happens to be my life passion and today we're going to talk a little bit about scuba cylinders and the amount of air they hold. They're made out of aluminum. It's a pretty thick material. Here we have a tank that you can actually see how thick it is when they're taken apart. When we put air into these tanks, we put it in in cubic feet. Now you know how big a cubic foot is. It's one foot by one foot by one foot. And what we turn around and do is with a compressor, we push lots of cubic feet of air into the tanks, which typically in a tank this size, we would get about 50 cubic feet in. But as we push that air in to get it into that small of a space, we increase the pressure in the tank. And the pressure goes from the surrounding pressure that we have here on Earth up to about 3,000 PSI that we put into the scuba tank. PSI, what is PSI? Well, that's pounds per square inch. So how much air pressure is that? Well, maybe in your parents' car tire, we're talking about 35 PSI. And then a bicycle tire, 65 PSI. And if your dad or mom has a compressor, that compressor might only go up to about 250 PSI. Our compressor here at Sunken Treasure will go up to 5,000 PSI. So you can imagine how hard that compressor is working to push all that air into that small space so that we can get our 50 cubic feet of air into the tank. Of course we want lots of air when we're underwater, so we can turn it on just a little bit and we can just keep bringing it up and getting it higher. And you can see how much air we're going to push out of here. So now we have this regulator hooked up to the scuba tank. What's the regulator for? Well, at 3,000 PSI, it'd be very difficult to breathe through it. So we have a regulator that breaks that pressure down to a usable amount of air that you can breathe through and feel real comfortable underwater. And all that air that we push into the tank, why so much air? Well, all the exciting things that we see underwater, we want to be able to stay down for a long time. And the more air that we can carry, the more that we can push into that scuba tank, the more exciting things and the longer we can spend down there. If the bottle gets dropped, the sudden shock will probably expel enough air to cause the diver to sink all the time. The sudden impact knocks some of the air out of the straw, which is then displaced by heavier water. Can I 
you'll have to extract the diver from the bottle. Either you can empty the bottle and pull it out, or you can make a rescue tool with a couple of straws. Without the bendy part, you need them to be stiff. Tape them together and tape a paper clip hook on the end. Then you can rescue the diver. Since the water displaced some air inside the diver, you need to shake out the water before putting it back in. Then it should work again fine. If a diver keeps sinking, even if you've shaken out the water and it doesn't have too much weight, chances are you have a leak in the straw that's letting out the air. Sometimes you can see the crack in the straw, but often it's virtually impossible to see without probing it like a dentist. In either case, just start over with another straw. It doesn't take very long the second time through. We already mentioned that you can make a Cartesian diver from a medicine dropper. Tape on the first paper clip. Make sure it's dry when you apply the tape. Then hook on more paper clips to the first one. Another alternative to straws is to use 10 inches or 25 centimeters of thin, clear vinyl tubing from hardware stores. A balloon makes a good diver. You don't even blow it up. You only need a little bit of air. I knot the balloon and attach a paper clip to the knot. The only thing I don't like about Cartesian divers made from balloons is that you can't see the air compress. Making divers out of packets of sauce is often recommended on the internet, but the amount of air inside to compress is very small. So this packet by itself won't go down even when I squeeze really hard, but just adding one paper clip completely sinks it. So I tape on a part of a paper clip. I don't need out very much. Maybe you can find better sauce packages than I could. A few people have begun to experiment with interesting Cartesian diver variations. One person made a diver that was just slightly too heavy to float. He put it in an oblong bottle. I've used a ketchup bottle to show it here. By squeezing it a certain way on the ends, you can actually make the diver rise instead of sink. Can you see how you could decrease the pressure inside the bottle by squeezing it a certain way? Dr. Jeff Binden created a spinning Cartesian diver. He poked holes into a pen cap at an angle. I think he used sticky adhesive, but I'm sealing the top and bottom of this pen cap with hot glue. Interestingly, it only spins one way, even though the water flows both in and out of the holes. Looking more broadly, thinking about buoyancy in Cartesian divers led me to add a hot air balloon as another project to sciencetoymaker.org. Guys, guys! Uh -oh. Danny, get up. <laughs> We're going down. When air gets hot, it expands and becomes less dense. If we can make the hot air balloon, including the trash bags, straws, and candles, lighter than the cool air it displaces, then it floats. <laughs> you can find out more about things that float in the water or the air by researching the word Archimedes Principle. Check out sciencetoymaker.org for some great links related to Cartesian divers.